My name is Dr. Sarthak Rohit, and I'm here to present a paper on role of MRI in patients with epilepsy. Epilepsy is one of the most common disorders, causing significant morbidity to the patient. Various imaging modalities are available to evaluate the epileptic agent. Focus common ones are EEG, CT, and MRI, out of which MRI has a crucial role in diagnostic routine in epileptic patients. The main aim of this study was to assess the role of MRI in patients with epilepsy and assist in detection of epileptogenic focus to detect and characterize the structural origin of seizures and significantly influence the treatment planning and prognosis to provide precise characterization, location, extent of pathology, and its relation to vital cerebral structures. I have included a study of 120 consecutive patients presenting with epilepsy and they were screened by using MR Siemens Magneton Skyra 3D machine. All ages patient without any gender bias and clinically having some kind of epilepsy were included in the study. Those patients who have a clear contraindication of MRI investigation, like patients with metallic fragments, clips, or devices in brain, or insulin pumps or cardiac pacemaker were excluded from the study. The procedure was briefly explained to the patient and uh, according consent was taken. My study period was from March 2021 to March 2022. Uh, the MRI sequences which included in the study were con conventional MRI sequences like diffusion weight, T1 weight XU, T2 weight XU and sagittal, flare porum, gradient echo, and uh, SWI images. Additional epilepsy sequences were T1 weight immunization recovery and T2 weight operative The contrast study was by uh, given by injecting the magnelec catalinum contrast with a dose of 0.1 millimole kg per body weight. Results included out of 120 patients, 42 were below 25 years of age and 72 8 were we are above 25 years of age. Out of 120 patients, 56 were female and 43 percent were female. Out of 120 patients, 80 patients were found to be normal, and the rest of the patient are having some kind of pathology, out of which the class is, was the most common cause associated with epilepsy. The next most common cause was visual temporal sclerosis. Mass lesion, which were detected on MRI associated with the epilepsy, LP9, as well as malignant. The common ones are low grade glioma, dysplastic neuroendocrine tumor, and intracranial derma. Majority of the pediatric patient with hypoxic injury or its equally and glasses had some kind of past history associated with birth asphyxia or attack of hypoglycemia or assisted ventilation. Uh, some common uh, infective etiology which are associated with the epilepsy were meningoencephalitis, out of which the box meningoencephalitis was most common. Uh, in pediatric age group, Corpus callosal aginess is focal cortical dysplasia, like David of Mason syndrome, polymicrogyrin, leukodystrophies were found to be cause of factor of epilepsy. Some examples associated with the epilepsy, out of which the uh, mass lesions which are associated with the epilepsy were glioblastoma. Glioblastoma uh, are high grade glioblastoma, uh, high grade tumors, which is WHO grade 3 or WHO grade 4 tumors. Uh, other uh, tumors associated with uh, epilepsy were oligodendroglioma. And the appearance of glioblastoma was heterogeneous hyperintense on T2 weight images, heterogeneous hyperintense on T1 weight images, which are having peripheral enhancement with central non enhancing necrotic areas. Oligodendroglioma having a cortex or subcortical white matter involvement, which is hypointense to T1 weight, and heterogeneously hyperintense on T2 weight images. It can have cystic degeneration, calcification, or hemorrhagic areas within it. DNET is a WHO grade 1 tumor, which is commonly associated with intractable temporal lobe epilepsy. MRI shows bubbly appearance on T2 weight images and does not completely suppress on fire images, and it doesn't have any diffusion restriction. Some benign uh, etiologies which are associated with the uh, epilepsy, out of which the most common was gliosis and ankle flow malaysia, which is having a CSF signal intensity on all the sequences. Measure temporal sclerosis, T2 oblique coronal image uh, is the best uh, image to Im sequence to diagnose the measure temporal sclerosis, which is uh, which is having a finding 
of a reduced hippocampal volume, which can be epsilator or bilateral. Periventricular leukomalacia, it is a white matter injury of premature uh, prematurity affecting the periventricular zone, typically resulting in cavitation and periventricular cyst formation. It is common in premature newborns and less than 1.5 kg at, uh, at birth child. And acute infarct, which is having acute onset of seizure followed by limb weakness. MRI showed uh, diffusion restriction and subsequent fall in the of signal in ADC images. Uh, another infective uh, uh, etiology associated with the epilepsy was neurocystic sarcosis. Uh, it showed uh, various, so it is caused by CNS infection, which is caused by POC tapworm, uh, tinea solium. It showed uh, various stages of lesion. Uh, uh, stages include the vesicular, colloid vesic colloidal vesicular, granular nodular, and nodular calcified. The lesion might have a spolex, which can uh, have a GRE blooming. Metachromatic leukodystrophy is the worst, one of the most common as autosomal recessive leukodystrophy in lysosomal storage disorder. MRI shows uh, bilateral symmetrical confluent areas of periventriculative white matter signal changes, particularly around the atrium frontal on of later ventricles. Another one was uh, type David of Mason syndrome, which is having the hemicerebral atrophy or hypoplasia, secondary to brain insert in fetal or early childhood, and epsilateral calvalent technique was a common finding associated with David Tate. Uh, David, David of Mason syndrome. In summary, conventional MRI brain sequences cannot delineate subtle structure changes in patient with epilepsy. Those epilepsy sequences are very helpful for the same. Decreasing the slice thickness removes the effect of partial volume, averaging resulting sharp images. By orienting the axis of imaging to the long axis to hippocampus, it can be assessed sequel, uh, adequately, and subtle findings of visual temporal sclerosis can be readily perceived. So, MRI is the definitive modality in assessing brain structure and this pathology is both congenital and acquired. With the help of MRI epilepsy sequences, it is possible to successfully characterize the brain pathology as well as its precise location, extent, and effect on brain firing time. It is very informative, accurate, and having additional advantage of being non invasive radiation free modality for evaluation of patient, patients with epilepsy. Thank you.